This quilt block doesn't look like a horse, but the name of this traditional block is Black Beauty. And today I'm going to show you how to make it. So this block, the Black Beauty, or otherwise called Blackford's Beauty, is a traditional 12 inch quilt block. It looks really complicated because it has a lot of little pieces, but if you take it step by step, none of the pieces are really difficult and it's pretty simple to do. Now, because of this layout and all the pieces, there are a lot of different color variations that you could use. So this one, you can see, has a colored sawtooth star in the middle, but there are some other variations of this block. So I'm gonna show you how to assemble this one, but all of the blocks are assembled the same way. You just cut the pieces out of different fabric. So if you're interested in one of these other variations, then you can click on the link below to go to the tutorial. That will give you cutting instructions for the colors for these other variations. And then it's still assembled in the same way as this. So if you're ready to make a Black Beauty quilt block, let's get started. So for this version of the Black Beauty quilt block from our background fabric, we're going to need eight two inch squares, eight, two inch by three and a half inch rectangles and eight two inch by five inch rectangles. Then for our color one fabric, which is the color of the star in the middle, we're going to need one three and a half inch square and eight two inch squares. And then from color two, which is the accent color, we're going to need 20 two inch squares. So once we have all this cut out, we're ready to begin sewing. Now to begin sewing, we're gonna need our two inch by five inch background pieces. There's eight of those. We're gonna need our eight color one two inch squares. And then we're gonna need eight of the um, color two two inch squares. So you're gonna have a bunch of these left over. You're only gonna use eight. And then to begin, you're gonna take your little two inch squares and you're gonna draw a line on them from corner to corner, so a diagonal line on each one of these. And you can use a pencil, you can use water soluble marker, uh, whatever works for you. And so once you've marked a line on all of them, then we're going to join these to the background rectangles. Now to make these units, you're gonna take your background rectangle and then on one end of it, you're gonna align one of the colored squares. Then you're gonna stitch directly on that line that you drew. And then after a stitch, we'll be able to cut off the excess corner and fold that back. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that we want four of these to go in one direction and then the other four to be a mirror image of that. So if this one is going in this direction, I'll do four like that. And then I will do four with the diagonal line going in the opposite direction. And so just keep that in mind. You want mirror images of each other. Um, so I'm gonna go and stitch that and then show you what it looks like when it's done. So when the stitching's done, then we're just gonna trim off that little triangle off the corner. You can use a rotary cutter if you want. I usually just use scissors because it's such a short piece to cut. And then we will press this seam like that. So you're gonna have um, four pieces that look like this. And then remember that four are gonna be mirror images that look like this. Now on the other end of this white piece, we're gonna add one of the color two or the accent fabric pieces and you're going to add these making sure that the diagonal line when you put on it's going to be added in the same way but you want the diagonal lines to be parallel so this white piece is going to be a parallelogram not a trapezoid if you remember your um, grade seven uh, geometry so make sure that these lines are parallel so then it will look like this. So when these pieces are made, then we're gonna join them 
this way so we can see it has a blue triangle at the top and then this white chevron and then the pink triangles are away from each other. So we're gonna join them like this with a quarter inch seam and these are gonna be the four north, south, east and west units in our quilt block. So that's what this unit's gonna look like. Now you might panic at first when you see this white point at the bottom because it doesn't go all the way to the edge. This is actually what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to have a gap from the edge because this is gonna be our seam allowance when we join it to the next one. So if it looks like this with the little pink gap at the end, that is perfect. Also, this seam I would press open. I don't normally press seams open, but in this situation I would press open just because where these diagonal seams uh, bump into each other, there's a lot of bulk. So I press that seam open. So we'll have four of these. So now we're ready to begin making the corner units. So for the corner pieces, we're going to use our color two or accent color squares and our background squares and background two inch by three and a half inch pieces. Now you should have 12 of these um, little squares. So eight of these you're going to join to the eight background squares like this with a quarter inch seam and then four of them you're going to join to four of these rectangles. So four of these rectangles we won't use yet but four of these will get an accent square joined on the side. So just using a quarter inch seam you can chain piece all of these and um, then press them to the dark side. Once these pieces are made you're going to take these ones with the rectangle just put them to one side for a minute and then with these ones, we're gonna join these the opposite way to make four four patches. So when the four patch units are made, we're gonna join a background rectangle to the side of each one of these. So just before we do that, take a second to double check the layout because these are gonna be joined with the long piece that has a square of accent fabric and it's going to be joined in this way so that you have the little diagonal line of squares. So you have to be sure to join this rectangle into this side. You can't put it on this side because then that wouldn't look right. So just double check before you join these to make sure that you're joining it onto the correct side. So now these units are made. We're going to join them with these units to get the to get the corner pieces with the diagonal line so now these pieces are done and i know it looks like this middle square is smaller than the other ones but again that's just because of seam allowance so don't worry about that so now we're ready to lay out and assemble our whole block so our um, colored square goes right in the center and then these chevron pieces go at north, south, east, and west. And we can see this little sawtooth star in the middle. And then these pieces go in the corners with the lines coming out from the middle, the lines of squares. So what a great block. It looks really complicated, but when you break it down step by step, it's not that difficult. So we're gonna join this just like a nine patch block because you can see we have three pieces across and three pieces down. So we will join these into three rows and then we'll join the rows together. So when I made the rows, I pressed all the seams away from the chevron units. So this seam is pressed this way that seems for us that way. And these two seams are pressed in. And that way, when I go to join them, I can see that these seams nest together. They just kind of butt up against each other and that will help it all to align more easily when I'm stitching the rows together. So here it is, the Black Beauty Quilt Block. Don't forget to see the fabric instructions for other variations of this block. Click the link below to go see the tutorial. And for more quilting tutorials and inspiration, be sure to check out ebitastudio.com.
www.thepowerofpositivity.com.